In this video, we install Windows Sandbox and take a first look. Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In computing terms, a sandbox is defined as a protected environment in which an untrusted program may be run without affecting other parts of the system. In practice, this translates to an isolated temporary desktop environment where you can run untrusted software without fear of lasting impact to your PC. Prior to the release of Windows 10 version 1903, otherwise known as the May 2019 update, this was not a default feature of Windows and was typically achieved via third-party software including Sandboxy or through VirtualBox, which we addressed in previous tutorials. However, with the introduction of the Windows Sandbox app, a sandbox environment can easily be summoned from the Windows desktop, provided the device is running version 1903 or later, as this feature is new to the May 2019 update. As version 1903 is not in general circulation at the time of this video's publication, we have published a separate tutorial in which we install the update ahead of schedule, which is linked in the description accompanying this video. There are prerequisites, and your system must be running Windows 10 Pro, as home versions do not include the sandbox feature at the time of this video's publication. The feature is not enabled by default, so we click the start menu icon and search for the option to turn Windows features on or off, which we click. This prompts a dialog from which a number of Windows features can be enabled and disabled, and we scroll down until we locate the Windows sandbox option, which we tick. Once ticked, we click OK. A brief installation phase follows before we are required to reset the system in order to proceed. Once we are returned to the desktop, we click the start button and search for Windows Sandbox, which we click. The Sandbox app then runs. There follows a brief pause with a black screen as the Sandbox initialises, before we are presented with an entirely blank canvas upon which we can test software in a protected environment. The desktop itself features the default wallpaper, with Microsoft Edge being the only pinned app. Be wary of the recycle bin, which is bypassed in file deletion. The start menu is similarly sparse, linking again to Edge and a small selection of Windows tools. Edge functions as normal, and can be used as a means to download software for testing purposes. Quick access links to the default user folders. This PC provides access to a single system drive, by contrast to our host PC, which has three local drives, an optical drive, and 13 network drives. Network discovery is inactive by default and can be turned on upon first use. Doing so, however, does not provide access to our wider network resources. Here, we show a 7-zip installer in the downloads directory of our host machine. Drag and drop is not activated in this version of Sandbox, so we simply right-click the 7-zip installer and select copy or cut from the file menu, then return to Sandbox, right-click within it, and select the option to paste. Our installer then makes the jump from host system to sandbox. We can then run the installer within the sandbox environment and the software installs as normal and can be accessed from its start menu entry running entirely as we would expect. When we decide to close the sandbox, we are explicitly warned that the content of the sandbox will be permanently lost. This lack of permanence marks a clear distinction from, for example, VirtualBox Virtual Machines where installed software persists after a restart. When we rerun Sandbox, we are returned to an entirely clean slate. The installer file is gone, as is the installed 7-zip application. Indeed, everything is gone, and we are working again with a pristine version of Windows. Whilst this level of functionality provides a platform upon which software can be quickly evaluated, its limitations mean that there remains a role for conventional virtual machines. With that in mind, we return to VirtualBox only to find that the changes we have made to the system render our virtual machine inoperable. We therefore untick Windows Sandbox in the Windows Features dialog, reversing the process shown earlier. We also need to set the default behaviour of hypervisor at launch. To do this, we open a command prompt with administrator privileges and type bcd edit set hypervisor launch type off, then press enter. After restarting our physical machine, we can once again use VirtualBox virtual machines. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the TechFixFlix YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. 
Subscription is, of course, entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official TechFixFlix Twitter account. Until your next TechFix, goodbye.